Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Power Women in Insurance podcast. Today, we're talking to Rachel Robson, and you know what? She is a little bit awesome in so many different ways. We probably spent the last 15 to 30 minutes just chit-chatting. We have a ton of things in common, and you know what? She is being able to connect with insurance agencies out there to be able to help them take a technology level to the next level for their for their various systems. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into that, but I am so excited because we are merging a couple pieces of my life into this conversation, my love of tech, my love of convenience, my love of agencies, my love of insurance. So you know what? I'm just nerding out right now. So you know what? I'm really, really pumped. Rachel, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Teresa. I'm so excited to be here today. Well, I am thrilled to be able to have you. And I know that I'm really jealous too, because I know that you said that you guys are right outside of Nashville. And that is such a gorgeous, gorgeous area of the country up there. It is amazing. And apparently word has gotten out because the amount of growth that we've had over the last several years has been staggering. I drive through town every day and I, there's a new building there. I don't know where it came from. So, right. Right. And I think that, um, that's crazy. Have you, have you guys been, cause I know you're outside of Nashville. So was it more of like a small town feel a little bit? And I know like I'm, I'm outside of Dallas and we used to be like 30 minutes outside of Dallas. Now we're like a hop, skip and a jump and you don't even notice the difference anymore. Right. And, um, I've even thought about moving out further, but then I'm like, it's just going to be that way in another five years out there too. I mean, I pretty much got to go to Oklahoma to be able to get out of the Dallas Metroplex here in the next year or so, because it's just, people are just, they're everywhere, you know, and I love it. I love the energy of a city. I do. Um, but at the same point, sometimes I like the small town feel too. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it used to be one of those towns where it felt small and honestly, even though it's grown so much, both the town that we technically live in and Nashville itself, it still feels like a small town, even though traffic is a nightmare and it may take you two hours to go 30 minutes, but, um, but you really still have that small town feel. So it's not so bad yet. We still love it. And apparently everybody else still loves it too. So, well, good, good. I know it's a beautiful area up there. I love Nashville. I think it's awesome. So next time I'm up there, I'll come on up and we'll go out for lunch. I think that'd be awesome. Oh, sounds awesome. There's all kinds of great places popping up. That's the best part about it because I love food. So Very all the new restaurants coming in, that's the part that I'm just really enjoying about all this. Yes, yes. I love me some good food. Ugh, I love it, especially interesting food that's really good. I really like it. My husband and I, sidebar, my husband and I, when we first started dating, he lived kind of like off this area of Dallas that really wasn't very well developed, but they had just put a highway out to that area. I told him if there was not a highway, we never would have dated, but he needed to come to my end of town to be able to take me out for dinner. Cause I'm like, you don't have anything, dude. Like there's nothing. So when we got married, I moved out here and I'm like, we're still driving 20, 30 minutes to go get good food, you know, but luckily in the last like year and a half, this area started to really grow a lot more, which is wonderful. And maybe the little city girl, I, I do like that, but we finally have good, good sushi. That's I love sushi. And I don't mind if it's attached to a hibachi bar, but I don't think of that as authentic sushi. I mean, you know, that's kind of my thing. And it, I mean, it's good sushi. Don't get me wrong, but that's really all we've had out here is like a hibachi and like sushi. And that's been it, but some really good sushi. We finally got it. I'm so excited. Well, that's awesome. Because all yeah. we have is like chilies, not nothing against chilies, but you know, sometimes you want something a little bit more authentic, a little more, I guess, something a little different. So having all the new local places come in, that's been the highlight. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to make a sushi to go order here in just a few minutes too. I'm just <laughs> as soon as they open. I lunch well, plans. Right. Rachel, so tell me, you are in the technology place space at this point, but really focusing on the insurance industry. So how did you get into where you are today? What is your passion around it? And I cannot wait because girl, you and I are so simpatico in a love of technology, love of insurance. So tell me how you got where you are today. Well, it's kind of a random weird story how I ended up where I got today. Um, it seems like with insurance, you either are born into it mm -hmm. or you just accidentally get into it. I don't think a lot of people grow up when they're five years old and say, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be in insurance. Um, but it's one of those things that once you get into it, I've always been told by my college advisor, he always said, once you get into insurance, he said, you don't ever get out. True. And that's really kind of been the story of my life, even though I, I thought I had gotten out at one point and, and I've, I've come back. So yeah, can't um, leave. 
You can't yes. go anywhere. You're stuck. <laughs> like Hotel California. You, you can change. Right? You exactly. Can That's, you know what? That should become our theme song is Hotel <laughs> California for the insurance industry. That's you know it. what? I'm actually going to play with that a little bit because that, okay, like that. <laughs> that sounds like a nice glass of wine and, and, and some fun right there. <laughs> Yeah, so so my Hotel California story is that, you know, I mean, I randomly got into insurance just because I was a poor college student and needed a job. I had $20 in my bank account and I just had to have a job. So uh, the agency owner that I went to work for at the time, I just was knocking on doors and I just walked up and I said, you know, I'm this 18 year old college kid. And I said, hey, will you hire me? <laughs> so for some reason, he decided to hire some college kid who knew nothing about insurance and brought me in. And that's kind of how I got started just from scratch. I'm a small startup um, family owned agency. And so I really got a love for the small business and um, the small agency um, and the independent agency um, is, is actually honestly been all I've known, but, uh, but I grew to really like it. And so I ended up, oh, I had been an aerospace major at MTSU at the time because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I mean, who doesn't think flying sounds cool, right? So I did that just with mom and dad, I'm going to be a pilot. So, you know, just to do something different. Yep. And um, of course, then once I got my license, I decided, you know, I didn't want really to do that for a living. I just thought it'd be something fun to do. So um, I ended up falling into this insurance job and changing my major to insurance and the rest they say is history. I've been here and then worked at an agency for um, 11 years um, with the same agency. Um, I loved wow. it. Um, they were great. Um, started out personal, ended up commercial. I love commercial aspects of things just because there was always something different, something unique. It was always mm -hmm. a challenge, always something different to learn. And uh, I did that for 11 years. Um, got out and had my child. Um, it was really important for me. I always knew that I wanted to stay home with him through the early years until he got back into school. And long story short, at some point in time, um, this agency owner that I'd worked for, you know, was calling me back, want me to come back and work for him. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm not really ready yet. But then he came in with this offer about this project um, management type uh, to transition his management system um, in his agency again, which was the fourth transition he had done on management systems in his agency through the 20 odd years I mean, he'd been in business. Wow. So, so I was brought in to um, facilitate that transition again. Um, so that's kind of how I got back into it and how I got back into uh, where we are today as far as the um, agency management side of it, because the transition didn't go exactly how it was anticipated. Um, mm. This goes, I guess, kind of back to how we talked before. Um, I don't know if, if you had your your CRM insurance CRM business. I think you know years ago, and which I think, like I mentioned earlier, to me it was impressive. It's like way before your time. You're just this future thinker that had this great idea, and you knew what people needed. Um, and I think it just took a while for industry to catch up. And so at this time, this was you know back around 2014, 2015. This agency owner he had his agency management system, and he had a separate CRM system because he knew that that's what his agency needed. He's a sales organization. And, and, and you know, these management systems, they manage your policies, um, but they really didn't provide a way for agents to um, really promote their sales, sales aspects of their business, their, their marketing, their client nurturing, um, that sort of thing. And so he was looking for something. So he had gotten a separate CRM system, but then you end up with the problem of managing two separate systems. And one, everybody's busy. Your employees are frustrated because they don't want to be putting the same information in multiple times. The information isn't always accurate because it updates in one place and it doesn't get updated in the other. Yep. So, I mean, there's a lot of issues with that, even though it was better than not having anything. And so this um, mm -hmm. new agency management system, you know, came to market and it sounded like exactly what he's looking for, you know, a CRM based management system. And so that's what I was brought in to kind of facilitate that, that changeover. And long story short on that, after several months and lots of money, the system never did exactly what it was sold to do, I guess. Um, but through that process, I really got familiar with the CRM system that they were using. I was like, man, it doesn't make sense. Why with technology the way it is, why can't there be a system as user-friendly and powerful and, and helpful as the CRM that we're using that also does the policy management side? Because to me, it's just why not? It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So we built our this CRM system out for the agency to do exactly what we wanted to do. And it's like, why are we keeping this to ourselves? There's so many agents that are looking for this. They're searching for this. They know they need it and they don't know 
what the possibilities are even. They don't even know what they're missing. Um, so we decided to take that and create something that we could market to other agencies and help other small agency owners. Um, it's, it's really scalable, but what it does is it allows even the small agency owners to be able to compete with these larger carrier, uh, larger direct writers, captive agents that have these powerful marketing backgrounds, you know, marketing, you know, systems behind them. So I feel like I've been talking a lot. So no, you're good. That's perfect. That's perfect though. I love that. So, <clears throat> you know, so one of the things you mentioned was that back in my previous life, sometimes I feel like I've got all these like sections of my life. I've lived so many different lives, but uh, back in 2003 through 2015 was where I officially, um, end of 14 is when I officially kind of disconnected. But um, my dad and I were subscribing to online leads through companies like NetQuote and All Web Leads and InsureMe and all of those. And we um, were subscribing and there were all these papers everywhere and then we're trying to follow up with people and you made notes on these pieces of paper and all of a sudden you'd lose the piece of paper and you were like, oh, what, what happened? Where did it go? And um, it was so much data entry to be able to put it into a management system because the management system required so many different pieces for you to be able to put all the stuff in that, to be able to do whatever. <clears throat> and then you had to find it again later on, which was just a nightmare. So my dad actually sat me down at one point and he and we had opened up the agency and he was like, and he was still at Allstate at that point. So I was running this independent agency all by myself. And, and I didn't have a license when I first opened it. And he was like, so go build this computer system. Just go do it. It'll be fun. You know, and we did that very naively and um, went on out and made some great decisions, some bad decisions. But one of the things we love to hear was people's visions. And I know that back in the 2003, 2010 mark, really, nobody really even knew what all that was or where it was going or what it was supposed to do or or any of that and it was so confusing so i would love to hear i know you mentioned that you guys were really pursuing that a, CR, a crm slash agency management system what did you guys envision for the agency not whether or not it did it or not because i know you said it really did not do what you guys had kind of envisioned but what was your dream that you guys were trying to achieve even back then? Because I think you guys were really ahead of the game and very progressive in that. I think I was a little bit ahead of the game and a little bit more naive, but at the same point, where were you guys kind of dreaming that you now have been able to achieve? Well, I think with, with a lot of agency owners, they have obviously many different stresses in their life, but one of the big stressors is bringing in new business. Obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to make money. You're going to have to close the doors. You've got all these people depending on you, your employees, your family, um, everything. So finding qualified leads is difficult. But then also once you get those leads, having a good way to be able to, con you know, continuously connect with them and to follow up with them and to nurture those leads. So there was the whole lead nurturing aspect of things um, that that didn't really exist. Um, I mean, yeah, you could go into like, you know, Chipmunky or somewhere and do something, but it was all separate from your system. Yep. So there was the whole, you know, lead nurturing uh, thing that you had going on. But then also there were so many other aspects um, that needed marketing assistance that the current management systems didn't really have a good way to address. Um, and that would be your cross-selling and upselling opportunities, um, client nurturing and doing account reviews, all those kinds of things that with the way technology, you know, has progressed through the years, there should be a way to automate a lot of these processes because they are repetitive. It's not like you're having to go out and um, type out a completely separate customized email, but yeah. even so you're able to, with technology today, customize emails because this computer systems it's a information is there they can pull that information into those emails for you so you're not having to go research the policy and so what they've got it's there let the system pull it in for you send that email for you and then you save your agent for those high level activities such as actually making the sales or educating the clients and providing value in some way um, for your clients there in their advisory roles so i love that i <clears throat> I love that. And I think that over the course of time, we've also seen so many other technologies step up. Like um, we were talking about earlier, like sending out letters, postcards, you know, automatically and electronically. And we've also seen, you know, auto dialers and, and phone systems and voice over IP systems just in our own phones, you know, systems for our agencies really pop up. 
So where have you guys, I mean, this is a huge da daunting project that you walk in and you kind of take over. What, what have you guys been really focusing on? What is your kind of plan of going forward? What is your, your where you guys are versus where you guys are going? Because um, in fact, I don't even know if we've even mentioned the name of your, of your product yet. Yeah. I want to make sure that we do that because I find that there are so many companies that don't play well in the marketplace. They don't play well with each other. They don't play well with the agent, right? They don't play well with the agency. They don't give the reports. They don't give the numbers, right? Um, what has been your dream versus what have you guys been able to achieve versus where do you guys feel like you're going? I want to hear the mission of uh, season, how you guys are putting it out there. So tell yes. me a little bit about that. Okay, yes, so CJ, just to throw the name out there, CJOS is the system that we've developed. So CJOS.com, if you want to check it out, S-I-E-G-E-A-O-S.com. Um, so the what you're talking about with all these different systems that, that played, you know, didn't necessarily play well for each other. So yes, with all these technologies that have come out, there's all these great um, opportunities for agents to do really neat things with technology. And so you end up, okay, well, you've got, you know, Slack comes out and you've got all these, you know, chat features and yep. I can chat, especially I got multiple locations. It makes it easy to communicate or then we've got Calendly so we can easily, you know, book without having to, you know, go back and forth. Is this day work for you? Or no, I can't do it this day. What about this day? So, I mean, there's all these other little features that come in and then you end up with this giant insurance tech stack um, to run your agency where you may have 20, you know, different applications and systems oh, that cool. you're having to use they don't talk to each other. So you have all these information silos where you've got some of your information here, some of your information yeah. here. And, well, and then you have to have Zapier or whatever people call it different things, Zapier or whatever, you know, kind of thing to yes. be able to connect all of them. So not only do you have these silos, then you have to have connection points and it gets to be a, a lot. It makes my head hurt to tell you the truth. Yes. It just makes my head hurt. And so that's where what we built with Siege is to put everything on one single platform. So okay. you've got all of your uh, basic things that your agency needs. We've got you've got the CRM. It's it's our system is built on a true full CRM platform. So uh, and it's I'll just go ahead and say so I don't know if anyone is familiar um, with how the different uh, platforms work, but you've got the CRM system. It's got all of your different marketing aspects. It's got your database aspect. But what we've done is we've taken the agency management side, which is your policy downloads, and that pulls into the CRM system. So it's not two separate systems that are trying to integrate, talk to each other. It's actually built into the CRM system. So it's on one platform. Um, but the system, in addition to that, has about 40 plus different business applications, again, that are included on this one single platform. You've got one login. You've got one set of user permissions that you have to manage as an agency owner, uh, but because it's got, you know, the counting, it's got their accounting program, it's got their built-in calendar scheduling program, it's got your web hosting, it's got, um, like I said, there's 40 different business applications on one single place. And so it can be overwhelming when you're looking at things as an agency, but like with anything is you just have to start small. It's like, what do I need today? And you learn that and you master that and you come to the next thing. Okay, well, this is great. I wish we could do this. Well, guess what? The system being very customizable and user friendly allows agencies to be able to customize our system to allow agencies to work how they want to work instead of how okay. some big corporate tower decides, hey, this is the best way to do things. Well, maybe it is, you know, in this state or in this big city, but you know, I'm just a two person shop in, you know, Oklahoma and I do a lot of crop insurance and that doesn't really suit my business model. So the other really neat thing about Siege is the level of customization that is truly available, not just say we're customized and you have this little bitty box that you can like maybe, you know, change one little thing, but the amount of customization that can be done and can be done without a tech degree, because that is the whole thing is to make it user friendly and easy to use because otherwise people aren't going to use it. Uh, and, and that's, I think I hear that all the time in the insurance industry is I'm not a tech person, right? And, you know, they can barely work their phones and they, you know, making the decisions for <clears throat> all of these different systems and all these different platforms and how are their teams going to use them and how are their teams going to interact with them and maybe have, you know, three or four, you know, team members that are pro technology and three or four that are not. And all of a sudden you have this war going on in your office. And, you know, how are you guys, as far as, training and helping agents. I know you say that they can kind of take it in. 
<clears throat> one of my favorite sayings is how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? How do you yes. help uh, the, uh, insurance agents based on wherever their comfort level is? How do you help them to learn how to eat that elephant? Because we have mental, emotional, financial, and we have time restrictions on our lives that if we could dream the big dream, right? But at the same point, we have to make sure that we manage those things. And I mean, I know you said you have a son and the idea is you got to go home at night, right? You can't right. sit around all night long and, and work. I know we're doing some, some data cleanup on our end. And um, last night I got home about seven o'clock from, an, from another appointment. I stopped off to get my nails done. So full disclosure, I was not working until seven, but you know, I got home, my husband made a great dinner, a great shrimp salad, mm -hmm. fabulous, love him for doing it. We sat on the back patio, it was awesome, you know, loved it, but I brought out my laptop and sat there and worked for about another two hours. And I asked him, I said, okay, well, are you ready to go ahead and watch a little bit of TV? He goes, Teresa, it's like 1030. He goes, we're going to bed. I was like, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> I just lost all track of time. He sat there and read his book. So how do you help agents manage the time, the resources, and all of that to be able to make that change because that's daunting. It, it is, it is. And any change in system is, is a lot of work and it does take time. But the amount of time that you save on the backside, if, if people mm -hmm. could just see the difference that it really makes in their agency, if they could see, you know, six months down the road, how life is so different. It's kind of like when agencies made the transition from paper files to digital files. So I remember I, I worked at this agency when that happened. So we had probably, I think 27 or 28 stand up as tall as me file cabinets full of paper files. And so just the, the idea that I've got to take all these files and digitize them is completely overwhelming. And you're like, we're never going to get finished. This is, I mean, we don't have time to do anything else. And it's, it's completely overwhelming. But now you look back, nobody can imagine a life where we ever went back or stayed with paper files. We're like, I can't believe we ever Now did you look that. at people and you're like, really? You're still like on paper? Oh my gosh. I mean, those all of a sudden are like the archaic agents, right? And it actually exactly. diminishes the valuation of your agency if you ever choose to sell. Exactly. So, I mean, that's a really big key that I want to make sure we bring out here as we chat, because as technology moves forward, a, a, a positive, growing, healthy agency has mm -hmm. technology. They have team members that know how to use the technology. And it's those agencies that don't move forward in that conversation of how to be a healthy agency as far as technology goes, as far as their team goes, as far as their team's education, as far as, far as like we said, paperless, right? Exactly. They are getting devalued in the sell process because they don't have those resources. And agency owners look at them and they say, oh my gosh. I've got to hire some high school kid to come in and like scan all these documents and shred all these documents and file all these documents. And I got to, I mean, it becomes like people walk away from agencies because of stuff like that. So I think that's really important to make sure that we do mention is that technology is no longer a luxury. It's really almost even a sell point for being able to have a healthy agency that even will be able to be our long-term exit, part of our long-term exit plan. And, and that's exactly where it's going because you know we made the transition from paper files to digital files and the transition is happening now. Um, you're starting to see that switch and people realize these legacy management systems that they've you know, used and depended on for so long, you know, they serve their purpose, but with the way technology has moved forward and moved forward at such a rapid pace and they haven't kept up, agency owners, real, I mean, they've realized that's not what the future agency is gonna look like. The future agency is going to have to have these, these CRM systems with the, this full marketing capability and the full client management and client relationship management that the legacy AMS systems don't provide. Otherwise, when it comes time, you know, later on to sell their agency and all these other agencies have moved forward and you're stuck on these legacy systems and you haven't kept up, that's really gonna hurt your competitiveness against um, the market and uh, limit your ability to attract new young talent that, that are expecting these so CRM true. systems because mm -hmm. you've got, you know, these fresh young talents come in. They don't want to work on some old system that can't do anything and then they have to do everything themselves manually. They have to run a manual report, and do something, you know, on paper. They're expecting technology to work for them. And so not embracing that change and seeing it coming, you'll eventually get left behind. So. Yeah. 
Well, that was part of the thing back in 2003, 2004, back when we started um, Agency IQ, is that my husband was in the technology space. He actually today um, makes sure people don't hack into banks. That's what he does. But back in the day, he worked for EDS and networking, and he would literally see me doing these things, and he'd be like, this is stupid. He was like, this is ridiculous that you're having to do all this. And I was like, yeah, but this is just what we do. And he was like, um, that's stupid. And that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know? And so then, I mean, I, we were 30, you know, back at that time, I'm aging myself. So, um, you know, back in 2003, I was 30 years old and we were young and we said, this is not the way that this should have to have to happen. So that's why it kind of gave birth to that. But I love the fact that even to be able to attract new team members into the agency, we have to be able to give them that technological piece. And I think honestly, if we talk about it from, so let's talk about it from lots of different aspects, right? We talk about it from an agency management perspective. It, it streamlines the process, creates almost a, um, grid technology creates a, a, a process that all team members have to be able to do in order to be able to do their job, right? Which streamlines and takes out some of that human error piece. And then on the other end of that, we talk about attracting better team members. But on the other end of that, I'm going to go on the total opposite of that spectrum. We have so many clients that bounce back and forth between direct to carrier and independent agent versus captive. And if they're shoppers, which that's not necessarily the people that we want, don't get me wrong, but they come to expect, and as and as the millennials get older and Gen Xers get in there and all this other stuff, they expect a certain level of connection electronically, mm -hmm. right? Just as much as those clients who were born in 1935 don't want to text, they want to email, they want you to give them a call. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the phone was new for them at one point, right? And they would be like, don't, don't call me. I don't want to talk to you on the phone. Come over and knock on my door and have a cup of coffee. It's the same type of conversation just multiple generations later that exactly. in the future today's I mean you know I've got a stepson that's 35 a stepson that's 32 my two kids are 28 and 22 if we email them they may get to it like in a week because they may or may not check their email but if you text them they're on it on top of it well, right I, and, and that's the, the younger generation yeah, exactly. And the younger generations these days, they're not going to answer a phone call. You've got yeah. to text them because so they do not want to talk to you on the phone. So, yep. yep. And I'm young because I don't answer phone calls either. <laughs> so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, even at, even at, but for me, I mean, even at 48, because I'm 48. But anyway, um, I don't, a lot of people don't answer phone calls if you don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And we just don't. We're too busy. And now we talk about time blocking and how we have to focus on getting done what we need to do and minimizing distractions, turning off our notifications on our phone and turning off our notifications on our email so that we can be productive. Well, if I don't know that phone call, I'm not going to answer it if I don't know that phone number. Right. And even, um, I know like Apple has got this thing where it says, maybe it's this person now because it picks up on your email signatures and the other pieces of your life because it's trying to give connection to our phone systems, to people and kind of trying to be able to get rid of that. And what are they doing? They're blocking spam calls or labeling spam calls. Technology is constantly moving. And for us to not constantly move with it, is we're doing our entire legacy a disservice. And the thing is, as you mentioned earlier, the way technology has changed, your customers expect to be mm -hmm. treated and they in, in a different way, and they expect to be um, catered to in a different way or handled in a different way that they've become accustomed to with technology. They're used to all this personalization and customization, all that kind of thing. So these systems today allow you to pull their personal information into these emails automatically without having to have a person manually go through, sit through a policy and pull out all their information. So they still get that personal customized, um, I guess, contact and information that they're looking for without somebody manually having to do it. So they still get what they're wanting, but the agency is able to automate those processes to save that the time for those agents. So that's one of the things that, you know, customers, they want to text, they want to be able to connect with you online, but they also want it customized to them because, you know, your phone's tracking you, it's gonna send you ads to what you're interested in. So your system, you've got all the information together when you have this CRM and policy management, agency management system on one single platform, 
all of the information that you have about this customer is in one place. So you can do that. You can take that information, pull it out and market to them or uh, review their accounts to make sure they're adequately protected so much easier than if you've got information scattered across all these different levels. So it's great for the agency, for the ENO, for the ease, you know, saving time, but it's also good for the customer. I love it. I love it. I love it. So where are you guys seeing this industry? Because this, this area of your industry going, you're really merging a couple different areas with the CRM, with the accounting, with the, uh, with the, with the man policy management, where do you see, and that's very cutting edge, very, very cutting edge. And I know that a lot of companies don't even like to talk to different people, right? I mean, I'm sure you guys have encountered a lot of those roadblocks, but we are seeing more companies opening up to that. We are seeing the industry opening up a little bit. So as you guys are projecting forward, where do you guys see yourself in five years as far as being able to bring that additional value to the agencies for the next level of what we should be expecting out there? So I think, and I'm really throwing this on you. I want to make sure everybody knows I did not precede this conversation, but I think it's, I think it's important for us to look forward so that when we do get there, it's not a shock because it's, it's the newness that we all get, 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 that we all struggle with getting our mind around. And if we can take a little bit of our lives and look at the newness of where TV remotes are going, I mean, oh my gosh, today's day and age, you can push a button say, hey, Google, show me, you know, Game of Thrones, whatever. And all of a sudden it'll pull up Game of Thrones on HBO. Who you would have thought to five years? Yeah. Who would have thought five years ago we could do that, right? So it's those types of things that I think we need to get used to pre-thinking about so that when they do come, we're excited about it rather than going, ooh, if I push that button, what's going to happen? You know, I, I just, I feel like that for me, that's, it's almost like a numbing of the surprise. Well, it's it's kind of similar to, in my opinion, similar to the electric car industry. So, you know, when electric cars came out several years ago, people were like, oh, that's weird. It's not that they were terrible because, you know, they would only go like, you know, 20 miles and then you're done. You got to recharge and then there's nowhere, nowhere to recharge your cars, you know, so, but it was coming. You know, yep. you have these super early adopters and they hop on because they see what's coming. Uh, but then as, you know, time progresses, more and more people buy in and, you know, it's going to be one of those things where five, 10, 15 years down the road, you're not going to be able to buy gasoline cars. I mean, it's going to, everything's going to be electric. So it's coming whether you're ready for it or not. And I really see that that's the way the insurance tech industry is going. I mean, you've got these people, they've had their legacy you know, management systems. That's the way they've always done it. And that's what they're comfortable with because that's how they know as much as they, you know, much they may hate them because I don't know anybody that just talks about how much they love their management system. Um, but that's what they're comfortable with and that's what they know. Um, but that change is coming. These agency owners that adopt early, they see the change in time. They see, I've got to have this full solution. And the ones that adopt early, they're going to have such a competitive advantage in the market. And then the ones that come in are eventually going to get, they'll get put along yeah. by the tide. So I think within the next five years, you'll see the majority of agencies are going to be on some sort of CRM based system. Um, yeah, that's, that's my vision of the future. And anyway. I think, I think we're going to see a lot more of the open platforms, right? The open yes. APIs right now. I mean, there are very few CRMs or management systems that even have an open API overall, but I think there's a call. There's like an awakening of agency owners that are saying, we need an open API or uh, what for the listener, what that means is an open backend that talks to other systems. That's really simple. Okay. But, um, you know, so that that way, if we wanted to be able to merge with a company that does postcards, a company that does voice drops, a company that does all these other things, you know, technology can only move at a certain pace to be able to build out the ability for people to um, do an auto dialer for whatever, right? Okay, we want to build an auto dialer into our system. Well, that's going to take six to eight months. Well, if I wanted today, an open API helps me to be able to work directly with maybe another carrier that can get me through in the meantime, right? I mean, ideally, we'd love a system that did everything. Right. Um, and or maybe where technology, and I've heard this conversation so many times, it's not feasible for us to do it at that price and build it out. So we're going to merge with that company or we're going to um, get an integration or AP, open API to be able to work with that company. So you can use that company, right? Because that's not on our radar right now. We've already got 8 million other things on our dry erase board, you know, or on our, on our project management platform. Sorry, not dry erase, but, um, you know, and I think that that open API backend is really going to be I'm hoping 
that that's going to be a better conversation because if it's not, we're yes. going to see a lot of management systems die. And that's, die. and that's one of the things that's really attractive about our, the system that we're on. So with CJOS, it has that open API. So uh, um, they have, you know, there's their own connector. So if their API is already built out for these third parties, yeah, um, there's, we've got the built-in connector, but also it works with Zapier. So, you know, Zapier people are familiar with. So any of these third parties, it's easily done for people that are not tech savvy, that can't go out and build their own APIs or work with their own APIs. But being an open API, if you've got somebody or if you want to go out, I mean, there's all kinds of people these days that you can hire on a project basis to do customization for you. Um, or we can always do customization on project, you know, per project level. So take a look at that for you. But if you've got your own guys that are smart, can do it yourself. And you've got this brand new tech company that's come out that, you know, we don't have time necessarily to build out a specific API for. It's open and you can do that or, you know, you can hire a tech guy to do it for you. And it's available and it's able to keep up with technology without one company having to do it all because there's just too much, honestly, with the way technology is progressing for one company to be able to keep up with everything. Yeah. Yeah, no, completely, completely, 110%. And I, and I, I think that's really where the, you know, the next age and age going is giving us freedom to manage our lives and our businesses the way that we do. Technology gives us the time back. It mm -hmm. gives us better team members. It gives us a better sale value and it gives us better customers. Yeah. So people go embrace the technology. Oh, what could you ask for? It's a perfect world. I love it. I love it. Well, Rachel, if people want to reach out to you and your company with Siege and all of that, how can they reach you? How can they connect? And how can they be able to learn more about your vision and y'all's product? Sure. Well, of course, our website is siege, S-I-E-G-E-A-O-S.com. Um, you can always email for information. If you email info at siegeaos.com, then we will get back to you very quickly, I assure you. And we are always here to do um, live in-person demos. Um, we always do in-person demos just because the system is so customizable and there's so much that you can do with it. And every agency is different. It's kind of like individuals. Every person is different. Every agency is different. And there are things that are unique to that agency or important to that agency that maybe aren't important to somebody else. So if we went and recorded a 15 or 20 minute demo, it's not going to show you what you want to see for your agency. So we always customize it to that agency to make sure it's addressing the issues that you dress on a daily basis and not what somebody else thinks are the issues. What's important to you. And I love that. I love that customization piece. Um, I think that's really important because there's a lot of people out there, a lot of missed systems out there go, oh, this is our system and that's it, right? And, and you get to be able to pick and choose maybe if you want to click on a button, but other than that, customizing beyond that is really not even a thing. So congrats to you guys. I know that that's Thanks. awesome. All right, everybody. Well, welcome. Thank you guys so much for listening today to us talk to uh, Rachel Robinson with Siege, and she is amazing. They're doing awesome things. They are a pretty, I hate to use the word new system, but they've only been out like in the last, uh, how long have you guys been around? Two years? Uh, well, yes, yeah, so we've been around two years. Um, so it's been uh, officially released to market out of beta uh, since the first of the year. So awesome awesome so check them out they're new they're up they're coming they're swanky they're cool they're sexy take it run with it i love it everybody make sure that you do also subscribe to the podcast so that you can listen to other amazing women doing amazing things for us in the insurance space and uh we always bring a new episode every single wednesday we're thrilled today to be able to talk to rachel and learn all about this amazing tech product and um how the industry is growing and changing but we do talk about a new topic every every single week. So join us. We're on all your major platforms and make sure you give us a review too. We want to know what you think. We want to know what you want to hear. We want to know who you want us to talk to. So everybody go on out, make the world safe for democracy and have a great week.